This is one of the two infotainment systems that you're gonna find inside of the Seltos. So it's either gonna be a smaller eight inch or this 10.25 inch. Big difference is that this larger one has factory navigation versus the smaller one that doesn't. This is a wired connection for Android Auto Apple CarPlay versus the one the smaller eight inch is a wireless. So those are the big differences, but I just, I love the functionality here. So I'm gonna show you everything you need to know. Starting off, you've got the option of selecting user profiles along the side, so you can change profiles easily there. One of the big benefits of going through different drivers is that if you have different presets set up, your phone connected, navigation preferences, and things like that, you can adjust it out based off of the individual person when you have that set up. You can go back to the home screen. You've also got this button to turn the display off. You could... Oh, go through and edit your home icons. So if you're not a fan of the layout, you can just do a press and then drag around as necessary. You can do that for the first or for the second page. If you don't like what you've done, you can reset it back to the factory default there instead. This is your current time and date if you are connected. And then starting off, I guess we'll go with maps first. So like I said, factory navigation is going to be standard inside the vehicle. So it does have pinch to zoom capabilities, but one thing is the second you start moving around, it kind of treats it as this is an endpoint that you want to take. So you could just kind of drag and drop that way if you want to, to set as a destination. You can save it, go to categories, or press there to circle in on yourself again. You can press this to go to a split screen. So if you wanted media going and things like that, you've got that flexibility. You can kind of do a swipe up and down this way too, or go full screen instead. You can change out your heading get rid of the navigation volume if you want to. So when you're coming to an upcoming turn, do you want it to let you know with a voice, with a sound effect, or you could scroll across in order to mute it instead. You can plus or minus this way and then have it auto zoom for you too if you want. Option for menu, so you can display traffic info, toggle the display off, or search for addresses. So you can search by point of interest icons, enter GPS coordinates, so it's latitude first, longitude second, or you see there, you can search by different point of interest icons. You know, so you can set it as a destination, I'm just gonna hit no there. So it's calculating and then you've got the root options. So whatever options are available there will show up. You can add in a waypoint. So if you wanted to stop part way, you could swipe through, you can search for an address, go point of interest categories and things like that. And then back out, done. And then you can start guidance there. Please proceed to the highlighted route. And there we go. And the route guidance will start. Along the bottom there, you can look, arrival time versus time remaining. You can reroute or close out, and then cancel the route if you want to. So it's very straightforward using factory navigation inside of this thing. Different options for the menu. So you can search for addresses, point of interest icons, look at previous destinations. So you would have the flexibility of deleting these if you want to, just to make sure people aren't checking out where you were going. There you go, straightforward. You can go back, there are Kia dealerships, you can cancel the route, edit, etc. And then you've got a series of different favorites that you can set up along the bottom. One of the benefits, like let's say if you have the home or work address set up, you can push the voice command prompt on the steering wheel, say navigate home, navigate to work, whatever the case may be. And it'll navigate to whatever your saved addresses are. Then there are a series of different settings along the side there. So you could, let's see, what are the important ones? Ah, nothing crazy there. Avoid different things on the route. So if you wanted to avoid toll roads, I guess would be the big ones. So oh, ferries, carpool lanes. Yeah, I would say that would be the big one there. Uh, anything else? Previous destinations is a cool one because you can save them. Or if you deselect that, it's automatically going to delete, uh, delete your previous destinations. Do you want it to show alerts? Map if you wanted to customize it. So what mode do you want to be in? Like 2D, 3D, etc. Auto scale means it's going to zoom in and out as you get closer to your end destination. You can change up the color. The nighttime black one looks pretty solid, but a few different color schemes that are available. You can change out your Star trek -y symbol there too, if you want. And then auto features, I don't think, yeah. Th that, honestly, those three things would be the big ones that you'd have to worry about using the navigation itself. So the next up is adding in a phone. Carry Bluetooth so, from your device in order to search. Looking for Seltos, pins match up. Do I want to allow contacts and favorites to sync up? I'm going to say no for now. Obviously, if this is your car, you'd want to do that, but I'm connected. Dial pads there. You can see what's going on with my connection status Download along the bottom. So I've got the current status there. So it's straightforward using this. Now, if you go into setup, 
You can look at device connections. So if you had multiple devices connected, you could look to see what's currently connected there. You can have it connected for phone or for audio, mix and match if you want. Bluetooth prompts are available so you can play mute. You can go into a privacy mode, but this is one of the big ones. So system, you can change the name of the vehicle. So if you want it to be Bob's Ride, Sally's Ride, whatever the case may be, that's where you're going in order to be able to change up the vehicle name. So it's just under your Bluetooth settings and then you can set up a unique password if you want to. Phone projection settings, you can enable Android Auto or Apple CarPlay and using split screen or not. So that is available. I just honestly recommend the full screen. It looks so much nicer, which I mean, speaking of which, let's set up CarPlay. So inside of this 10.25 inch screen, it is ah, a wired connection. So you've just got to plug yourself into the data USB port. Opposite end of the cable, you're just plugging yourself in. And waiting there. Do I want to allow CarPlay while the phone is locked? Yes, you want to allow that because if your phone is locked and you go to plug in, it may not actually work. So that's something you got to consider there. You just want to hit yes there. If you forget to press yes, I'll show you how to get to it in a second. Well, you're going to push CarPlay there and look at that. This is why we go full screen. This is beautiful. Love it. Along the side, it's your current connection, what map application is open last, media, and then your miscellaneous app. This is going to be to your home screen or back to the icon view instead. Google Maps, Apple Maps, and Waze inside of Apple CarPlay are, you can use your finger to drag around, but there's no pinch to zoom capability. You have to use the plus or minus along the side there that way. Circle in back to yourself, change up the heading, search for destinations. Like I said, exact same thing with Google Maps. So Google Maps, you can search. You could look at route options for highways, toll roads, and ferries. Look at traffic, north up, etc. And then Waze is the same idea. There we go. So you can see Waze connections, search for addresses, point out if there's something going on in your route. But there are so many different things you can use in this screen. Now, even though YouTube Music is supported, this screen doesn't support video playback whatsoever. Uh, one thing you can do on the Apple CarPlay side of things, if you press and hold the voice command prompt on the steering wheel, that's going to launch your Siri Assistant for you there. Very straightforward. Then getting back home, you can push the setup button along the very bottom, device connections if you want to. You can't change this because I'm currently plugged in. But if I unplug, projection settings, CarPlay, I want to show you what split screen looks like. It's not the prettiest thing, but it is available there as an option. So it's connecting through, give it a sec and launch back into CarPlay. So, I mean, the split screen option, it is there. So it's kind of neat because you can kind of go up and down between different options there. So I personally prefer the full screen Apple CarPlay, but that one's a matter of preference. And if I just unplug to disconnect. But that's how you set up Apple CarPlay inside of the Seltos. Setting up an Android is the exact same process. So if you weren't on the screen, you wanted to add in a phone, easiest thing, just go to setup, device connections, device connections, and then add Turn new. Bluetooth on from your device in order to search. Looking device, for. Select the name that matches vehicle name on the screen. Seltos and pins match up. So that's perfect. There we go. So connected. So it just connected to the Galaxy, but it's only connected for the audio. And that's one cool thing because you can connect to both phones for audio, for music, if you want to, you can kind of do a mix and match for one or the other. So if you wanted to have one phone for your phone, and if all of your audio is on the other, you can kind of do a mix and match that way. You can do a press and hold this way if you wanted to adjust who gets connection priority. So one big benefit there is that if you've got multiple phones connected to the vehicle, it's who gets connection priority first. On the phone, it's asking, do I want to allow contacts access to contacts? I'm going to deny that. Same thing for messages when it pops up, but I'm fully connected there. So going back home into phone, so you can see they're currently connected to the Samsung, can go to this icon there along the very bottom. So it's straightforward using it. And it said unsuccessful because I said no. You can easily do a device swap this way if you want to. So you can easily change out the device that you're currently connected to. But very similar to the iPhone side. If you wanted to set up Android Auto, you're a wired connection there. So just down the center stack, uh, plug it in in the middle port. It only it is for the USB type A port. And then plug in yourself in, Android Auto, perfect. And there we go. Should be launching in, look at that. Nice and simple, beautiful. So you've got this little split screen, that's the Android Auto default. 
But if you hit the map icon along the top, it stretches you out to full screen. So good, look at that. But one nice thing is that it is pinched to zoom capabilities in Android Auto versus it's not in Apple CarPlay. I love it. You can push the voice command prompt on the steering wheel if you wanted to activate your Google Assistant there. And then Google Maps, you've got a few options like looking at route options so you can tweak out so that you're avoiding motorways, toll roads, ferries, etc. Along the side, you've got Google Maps, your phone, Assistant. You can go to the split view or an icon view. But on your phone, if you select Android Auto, so you search for Android Auto, go into your settings, you can customize the launcher. So very similar to the iPhone side. If you prefer to have certain things up high, down low, you can just do a press and drag. But unlike the iPhone side of things, you actually have to restart Android Auto for any of the changes to take into effect. So it's not dynamic like what you saw on the iPhone side of things, but I mean, still, straightforward using this thing. I love it. And then you can just simply disconnect if you wanted to. You could toggle Android Auto off. So in your setup screen, if you go to device connections and phone projection settings, you can enable or disable Android Auto and Apple CarPlay. So one of the big benefits there is like, let's say if you're, yeah, so one of the big benefits is let's say if you want to be connected, but you don't actually want to use Android Auto or Apple CarPlay, you can just disable it simply that way if you'd like to. So no, a little bit of info there. The only other one would be deleting a phone, oh, which is actually done through setup, device connections, device connections, and you've got both phones connected. Delete device, you can mark all, delete, yes. And a few seconds in and you're set to go. So it's that easy setting up Android and iPhone devices inside of the Seltos. And hopping back home. So you've got phone projection, you can create a voice memo. There are climate control settings down the center stack, but you've got a different look for it here. So you can have it going to windshield, face, feet, etc. Put it into an auto mode, air conditioning, etc. I always just recommend keeping these ones turned on. So automatic defog, dehumidify, etc. as needed. And then you can also turn on the rear climate if this is available. So rear seats, you do have the flexibility of heated second row seats as an option. I love it. You can also have these things set up for the front and for the rear, which is great. Nice and simple. You can activate valet mode to lock out the screen. Sound mood loop. Oh, that's kind of cool. So if you wanted to put yourself into different themes. That's kind of neat. Nice. There's a quiet mode where it's going to lower all the volume in case you've got little ones sleeping in the back. Radio data, not a big one. Radio is the interesting one. So you've got AM, FM, Sirius XM, and a series of other media too. Like if you click on the media button down the center stack, that gives you all of the available media options, but there are a ton of options available. You can look at state, you can add in a station that way. So if you wanted to tune to a station, you could you could station the list and it gives you all of the available stations in the area. So if you're new to a place, you don't know what you could listen to, go here. You can listen, or you can list out every station. Once you find one that you like, you, put, you press that button there to save it, go to presets, and then you've got these options. So if you accidentally saved a preset like I did on this first one, select it, delete, and yes. And then you can have a mix of presets. So you've got AM, FM, Sirius XM, et cetera. Really useful like it. And then if you were to go to Sirius XM, so you've got all of your different stations that way. You can tune to a station this way if you want to, just by entering in the channel name. And then looking at active channel lists. Along the very top, you can turn the display off, look at your channels, delete presets, look at favorites, and then jump into sound settings, or go into a split screen mode instead. So if you wanted to, full screen, split screen, pretty nice, but I love that. Such a good look. Hopping back. Setup different options for the vehicle. So you've got all of these different buttons that you can push to dive in a little bit deeper to that specific area. But as you go through here, you're going to get all of those options anyways. So starting off with the head-up display, display control. So you, inside of the head-up display, you can move it up or down. You can rotate it, adjust the brightness, and then what's showing up in the head-up display. It's a few different options available. Cluster, you can also adjust what's going on with the cluster screen to a degree. So you can change out the overall brightness of the cluster you can turn on the blue light filter, and then there are camera settings. Blue light filter is probably the more useful one inside of the screen itself. And the reason why is because later on at night, it's essentially gonna dim the screen out to get rid of some eye glare. Usually recommend in the auto mode so the vehicle can figure out when it should turn it on or off. Uh, inside of the cluster setup, a few different options, like what theme do you want inside of the cluster? Do you want it linked to your drive mode or do you want it to be A versus B, etc.? 
You can reset your fuel economy, show what's showing up inside of the content section itself. It's neat. Moving out, climate settings, which we've seen earlier, the seat easy access. So what that one's going to do is it's going to lower the seat and back it up for you to get in and out of the vehicle easier. If it's on normal, it's just a light backup versus all the way back and down versus nothing happens. So that one's a matter of preference. Moving down from there, you've got some options for lights. So the big one there, I guess, is gonna be the high beam assist. So when the, high light, when the high beams are turned on, if there's an oncoming vehicle, it's gonna turn them down and then bring them right back up again when that vehicle passes. Headlight delay, when you go to lock the vehicle, do the lamp stay on, yes or no? You've got auto lock, auto unlock, etc. You can turn off the power lift gate. How fast or slow do you want it opening up? And then there are also two other unique ones. So a smart lift gate and a remote window control. So let's hop outside, I'll show you how those ones work. There are a few ways that you can get into the lift gate of the vehicle. So you can do it on the fob by pressing and holding. But one nice thing is that it's also got the smart lift gate. So you do have to enable it through the infotainment system. But once you do, you get about 10 to 15 feet away for 10 to 15 seconds. And then once you do, let's say if the key fob's in your pocket, your bag, whatever the case may be, handful of groceries, kids, etc., you just walk up to the back, see the lights start going there. And up the lift gate goes. So you could, like I said, you can enable or disable it through the infotainment system. So if you hate that option, you could get rid of it if you want to. There's no walk away feature though inside of the Seltos, but you could, like I said, close from the fob. So if you just do a press and hold. Now, one thing to note, closing and opening this way, if you release it, it's gonna stop the cycle. So you actually do have to keep on holding until you're fully closed, uh, clothed there, clothed. Until <laughs> you're fully closed there, fully clothed. Uh, what kind of reviews are we doing? But it's the basics of the fob there, with one exception. You can also use the fob in order to roll the windows down. So it's not all of the windows, but you still do have the option. You just press and hold the unlock button once. So you just do a press and hold and watch this. Down it goes, you can unlock, you can release the unlock button in order to stop it. And then same idea, you just press and hold again in order to continue the cycle. So the unfortunate part is that it only is powered down, it is manual backup. So even if we do a press and hold on the lock, it's not gonna roll it back up for you. So that's a really neat process. I love the smart lift gate and then the remote window control. So good digital key is available. So this one didn't have the key handy, unfortunately, but rather than bringing the fob with you, you could just bring a physical key. So useful for valet drivers. And then some convenient settings. So rear occupant alert, when you go to turn off the vehicle inside of the cluster, it's gonna tell you to check the back seat. And rear wiper went in reverse. So if your front wipers are going and then you put the vehicle in reverse, it's gonna automatically turn on your rear wiper for you. And then your driving systems, there are so many options here. Right? Smart cruise control works a few different ways, but if you want to walk through on how the actual smart cruise control system works, you'll find it down in the description of this video. But it's a basic set it and forget it cruise control. You get different warnings. So park safety means that it's going to lower your volumes. <laughs> Lead attention warning. So as the vehicle in front of you starts to drive away, it's going to let you know that that vehicle has taken off. So you can say whether or not you get that alert forward safety, there's a blind spot system. So if somebody's entered the blind spot on either side of the vehicle, it's gonna let you know. Parking safety. So there are different options for the camera itself. So do you want the parking lines showing up? Yay or nay? I think those lines are pretty useful though, but matter of preference there. And that's the basics of that. Driving safety, yeah, so see, you have, when you jump into any of the, like when you jump into any of these, you've got the option for everything to show up. But uh, whether or not you get some of these things like speed limit warnings, I'd probably say no to that one. Warning methods, eh, I'm probably going to say no to those ones. But all of these safety settings, they are a matter of preference whether or not they're on and which ones are enabled. Swiping across to media, which you've already seen. So it's which sources are available. So the grayed out ones means the ones that aren't currently enabled. And then there's Bluetooth audio and then USB music as well. You've got Kia Connect available, which does require an active connection notifications, so if there are any updates and things like that available. And then there's also the user manual. So scan a QR code in order to launch into the digital manual online instead. So I know that's quite a lot of information, but that's everything you need to know about the 10.25 inch screen inside of the Seltos.